Does Carter propose? Does he really propose? What's Fortune's answer? Hey everybody, welcome to the D. Louise book series. I'm Christina K. R. S. T. I. N. A. Hope you're having a good day. I'm trying really hard here. Trying, trying, trying. Um, today we are doing Bullets and Beads. Book 17 of the Fortune series. Fortune Reading is a former CIA operative who uh, was hiding out in Sinful for the first um, 11 books of the series. She was hiding in Sinful because an uh, arms dealer was after her. And uh, she now that situation is resolved, and now um, Fortune has opened up a investigation agency, and her best friends, Ida Bell Gertie, are listed as investigative consultants, and she's listed as the private eye. Uh, Ida Bell is president of the Sinful Ladies, and uh also sort of kind of engaged to Walter, the storekeeper, who is also Carter LeBlanc's uncle. And Carter is the deputy sheriff, and he's been hanging out with Fortune. They have a little bit of a love interest there. Allie is the baker in the family. She loves to bake, and she's dreaming of starting a bakery one day. Uh... Emmeline is Carter's mom, and she's dating Carlos, but people haven't gotten to know him yet, so they don't like him. Robert E. Lee is the 100-year-old sheriff that likes to ride around on his horse. Celia Arvino is the president of the God's Wives, and their main mission in life is to get one over on the Sinful Ladies. And Ida Bell is president of the Sinful Ladies. Um, Allie is Fortune's best friend, and she's also Celia's niece. Beatrice Poulsen is a member of the God's Wives, but she's also Ida Bell's informant. And she always tells Ida Bell if Celia is up to stuff. So it's always good to have... A secret informant. Um, Francine is the owner of the local diner and makes the famous banana pudding. Myrtle Tibero is an evening desk dispatcher and she is cousin to the mayor. And Big and Little Herbert and Manny are the local uh, gangsters. And they are also big fans of Fortune. And they also have secret governmental ties, too, that have yet to be discovered. Uh, Ronald J. Franklin is Fortune's gay neighbor and uh, troublemaker. He's afraid of Godzilla. If you don't know who Godzilla is, that's Gertie's pet alligator who comes to visit and she feeds him casseroles. Um, Deputy Barreau is Carter's assistant. Oh, and Ronald Jane Franklin is uh, her neighbor. He's also gay and a crush dresser, and he's also very fearful of Godzilla. And in today's book, we have discovered that Fortune's father, who died a very long time ago, this was a good breed, um, has resurfaced, although she his whereabouts and anything like that is unknown, but Fortune is trying to deal with the fact that he, he faked his death for reasons unknown at this time. And it's also Mardi Gras time in Sinful. And Gertie has a thing for the beads. She loves the beads. Absolutely loves the beads. I walked into Ida Bell's kitchen and stared at the hundreds of bright purple, gold, and green bottles covering every surface in the room. 
Gertie was at the sink pouring liquid from a pitcher into a bottle, and Ida Bell was putting stickers on them. I stepped up to the counter and picked up one of the purple bottles and checked the label. This is all sinful ladies' cough syrup, I asked. It wasn't really cough syrup, of course. It was moonshine. But as, sin as sinful was as a dry town, they had their own unique method of skirting the rules. Mardi Gras is our biggest sales time of the year, Ida Bell said. Even more than New Year's, I asked. Gertie nodded. Most people host their own parties for New Year's and they can bring liquor in from up the highway. But Mardi Gras celebration is all downtown and that means everyone is on public display. So obviously drinking, so no obvious drinking for the Baptists, I concluded. But those Catholics get to live it up, Gertie said. Stop grousing, Ida Bell said. They get to live it up for a couple days before they have to give up something they love for 40. Lent. Baptists give up stuff they love year-round, Gertie said. Ida Bell raised an eyebrow. Well, they're supposed to, Gertie said. Since this is a Catholic sort of thing, does that mean Celia's crew runs the festivities? I asked, hoping that wasn't the case. Celia Argino, our arch enemy, could turn even the most fabulous of occasions into a dumpster fire. Sometimes a real fire. She single-handedly burned down the sleigh ride at Christmas. She tries to ruin every, run everything, Ida Bell said, but the mayor gets to decide committees, and we've never had one foolish enough to put Celia in charge of the whole shooting match, even when they were Catholics. So Celia represents her group. I represent the sane side of things, and everything has to be approved by the mayor and the sheriff. Since the Mayor Marie was a close friend of Idabel and Gertie's and the sheriff pretty much hated the sight of Celia, that was good news for Idabel's crew. No way Celia could stage a coup. So what all happened, I asked. I figured everyone headed to New Orleans for a big round of debauchery. Lord, no, Idabel says. Navigating Vietnam was easier than making it through Bourbon Street for Mardi Gras. But it was such a big hit that every that most every city and town in Louisiana has its own Mardi Gras celebration. Some are big enough to have crews, which are groups put together specifically to throw down a Mardi Gras. Others that are smaller, like sinful, you just rely on some locals to put everything together. But our party is on Saturday night, Gertie said. That way, anyone who wants to head to New Orleans for the big... Parades on Sunday through Tuesday can still do it without missing the fun. So what happens in Sinful on Sunday, I asked. Mostly recovery and repentance from Saturday, Ida Bell said. There's funnel cake, Gertie said. Between that and this cough syrup, there's a lot to repent for. Funnel cake, I said. Assuming they got the stand put back together, Ida Bell said. What happened to the stand? They set up everything up today and were testing the equipment to make sure they were ready for tomorrow night when a squirrel decided he'd steal the product. Gertie nodded, pulled a flyby and snatched it right off the plate before the powdered sugar had even settled. Some people scrambled to catch him while others tried to jump on the table and climb the stand poles to avoid him and the whole shooting match collapsed. I'm surprised everyone just didn't open fire, I said. Didn't think they just didn't want to, Ida Bell said. But they're downtown, can't just open fire on squirrels on Main Street. Unless they steal something valued at over $100, Gertie said. Then you're allowed as long as you don't hit people. Of course you are, I said. So basically it's a big party for the whole town. Ida Bell nodded. Downtown is closed off and everyone gathers there. Everything kicks off the parade. Different people build floats and they go down, they go through downtown and turn around the neighborhood, then circle back. Important floor, float built by the Sheriff's Department in Walter holds the King and Queen of Mardi Gras. You're going to allow a parade after the sleigh ride fest fiasco? Celia's been banned from floats, Gertie said. 
and clapped her hands. Ida Bell grinned. It, there was an emergency vote of the Mardi Gras committee after Christmas. They decided unanimously, I might add, that Celia was banned from floats for a year. I would have loved to have seen her face when they told her that, I said. Gertie gave me a sad shake of her head. I asked Marie to film it, but she said it wouldn't be professional as she was there in capacity as mayor. Being professional gets in the way of a lot of cool stuff. Definitely, I agreed. Already, I already run into several occasions when being professional interfered with the most expedient way to conduct an investigation. Things like breaking and entering, being illegal, and interfering with police investigations was a constant trial in my line of work. Ida Bell snorted. So who are the king and queen, I asked. How are they picked? Everyone in town who wants to vote, Ida Bell said. Walter had a ballot box at the, grand, at the general store. They were voting for a week in September. You were in D.C. when it happened. They do it that far in advance, I asked. Gertie nodded. The king and queen have to get their costumes ready, and no one wants to go to the simple route. Every year, the new king and queen try to outdo the ones before. They've gotten very elaborate, lots of sparkly stuff, very pretty. The who was chosen this year. No one knows until they show up at the party, Ida Bell said. Well, except... Walter Carter and the parade organizers and the chosen people, which means Ida Bell, Gertie said, because she would, wouldn't keep a secret from me, that means I know as well. That's because you'll badger me until I either tell you or shoot you, Ida Bell said. Well, don't keep me in suspense, I said. It's Allie and Deputy Burrow, Gertie said, doing her bouncing and clapping routine. Cool, I said. Allie will be a beautiful queen. I'm a little surprised at Deputy Barrow, though. I think people wanted to give him a boost how, given how difficult things were around here last year, Gertie said. He really had you step up to the plate and learn how to handle things on his own. I think most of us were worried that he'd never be able to make a decision without Carter telling him what it should be. But he did a great job considering... Uh, Considering everything he was up against. I can see that, I said. The previous year in Simphal, a crime wave had sprung forth that started the day I stepped into town. Fortunately, none of the crime had actually been because of me. But there were some that still liked to point out that my arrival had appeared to be the catalyst that unearthed all of sinful sins. And it appeared I made it personal goal to get in the fat middle of every one of them. I had my detractors among the locals. Here, I said, Ida Bell handed me a cup. Try this and let me know what you think. I hesitated a second because I never really knew which direction they'd gone with the flavors or proof. Some of their cough syrup could take salt corrosion off a pier. I smelled it first and got a waft of spicy cinnamon. Ida Bell nodded, red hot. We needed a cup. We needed a spicy one for the party, but wanted to go the sweet route. I suggested a gulp and not a sip. Best if it misses your lips. I should have known better, but I dumped the contents of the cup in my mouth, figuring I could hold it for a few seconds to take in the flavor. But that wasn't going to happen. It was sweet, and the flavor might have been nice if it hadn't burned off my taste buds. I struggled to swallow, but finally gave up and spit it out in the sink. If someone turned another stove burner on, I could probably ignite it. I stuck my entire head under the faucet and let water run into my mouth and pour out. It's good, Ida Bell said to Gertie. I t attempted a glare, but as I could only get one <laughs> watery eye open, it probably wasn't that effective. Finally, the burning went down a notch, and I stood up. Don't give her any of the hot batch, Gritty said. Otherwise, your water bill will be through the roof. I stared. Hot batch? What was that? I managed to speak up, but developed what I was certain was a second-degree burn list. That was the mild version, Ida Bell said. 
It is hot in the yellow bottle. You people have different genetics than the rest of the world, I said. I grabbed a piece of ice from the refrigerator and popped it on my tongue. My cell phone went off and I pulled it out of my pocket. Carter, I answered with somewhat muffled hello. Where are you, he said. Ida Bells, why? Shots were reported at your house, he said. Well, since I'm not there, that's not good. I disconnected. He was starting to talk again, and I grabbed my keys off the counter. Shots fired at my house, I said. Ida Bell sat down the bottles and covered the glue while Gertie turned off the stove, and we all ran out the front door. By the time we got into my Jeep, everyone had a gun out. What the heck is going on, Gertie asked as I tore down the street toward my house. I was hoping you guys would know. Is it hunting season for a reason? This is Louisiana, Ida Bell said. There's always something being hunted, but not in the neighborhood. You don't think your former job has come back to haunt you, do you? Gertie asked, and I could hear the concern in her voice. I shook my head. Th if this was anyone from my past, they would have made sure I was home and the entire house would have been blown to bits. I sped up into th my driveway, dump jump jumping part of the curb as I went, and sure enough, two pistol shots rang out from behind my house as we leaped out of the Jeep. I can't get... I rounded the house at a dead run and pistol drawn and ready to engage. When I reached the back of the house, I immediately spotted the problem. My insane neighbor, Ronald, who couldn't stand me, was in my backyard firing his pistol at the alligator posed at the edge of the bayou. At least I was pretty sure it was Ronald. He had his back to me, but the private wardrobe in definitely indicated it was him. Ronald lived for elaborate costumes, often of a questionable nature. Godzilla, Gertie yelled and leveled her gun at Ronald. Ida Bell grabbed her wrist as she squeezed off a shot and the bullet hit my grill. I didn't have time to register my dismay over the grill. Not Gertie trying to shoot Ronald because the idiot lifted his pistol and fired another shot. Fortunately for Godzilla, Ronald was an awful shot. Unfortunately for Carter, that shot went over the gator and straight into the sheriff's boat, which was pulling up to the bank. Carter and Deputy Barreau both dived over the side and into the bayou. Drop it, Ronald, I said, or I'll shoot you and you know I won't miss. Ronald flashed a look at of me of pure hatred that could quickly dissolve into fear. That gator is stalking me. Drop it, I ordered again. Please don't make me, Ronald plead. As soon as he sees I'm unarmed, I'm sure he'll come for me. You're certifiable, I yelled. And you're on my property waving and shooting a loaded gun. Think about the law and whose side it's on. Sorry. Um... His shoulder slumped and the pistol slid out of his hand and on to the lawn. Carter and Deputy Burrow had surfaced and were digging, dragging their now sinking boat onto my bank. Carter was glaring at Ronald the entire time, but he must have figured I had the situation under control because he didn't bother to issue any orders of his own. I thought I had everything in hand until Gertie lunged. She hit Ronald with a tackle that would have brought down an NFL linebacker, and he screamed so loud it made my ears hurt. Then I heard a low, rumbling growl, like something from Jurassic Park, and I whipped my head around in time to see Godzilla push up on all fours and start hauling butt toward straight for Gertie and Ronald. I let out a whoop that made Ronald screaming sound puny, and everyone turned toward Godzilla, pistols drawn. I knew no one wanted to kill the gator, but shots rang out. I saw them hit the ground around the charging beast, but none of them pierced his hide. Unfortunately, our attempts to warn him off hadn't slowed him down at the least. By this time, Gertie was straddling Ronald and strangling him with his lace collar. In the midst of grasping for air, Ronald must have heard all the yelling and turned his head to see Godzilla coming at him full speed. Adrenaline kicked in and he leaped up, sending Gertie sprawling on the ground next to him as he took off at a dead sprint. 
Godzilla didn't even pause next to Gertie. He kept running full speed for Ronald, who realized he wasn't going to make it to his house and opted for the mag magnolia tree on our property lawn. Instead, he scrambled up to the first branch and lay on it, clinging to it like a sloth. Godzilla stopped at the base of the tree and stared up at him. I figured he was silently wishing him to fall. Idabel took off running from my house, and I gave her a surprised glance before hurrying over to help Gertie up. Are you all right? I asked. I'm going to kill that moron, she yelled, and took off for the tree. Godzilla saw her coming and lowered himself back down, and then he shook his head back and forth as though he was attempting co to convey his displeasure. Carter, Deputy Burrow, and I crept closer to the tree, gun still in the ready position, just in case the gator found any of us as offensive as he did Ronald. I heard my back door slam and looked back to see Ida Bell running across the yard with a pie pan. Wait, I said. I yelled at Ida Bell as she approached. Allie made that. Who cares who made it, Ronald said. Just give it to him so he'll leave. It's apple cinnamon crumble and I haven't had a piece yet. Everyone except Ronald looked conflicted. I have fresh bass thawing in the laundry room sink, I said. Carter and I will just have to eat steak tonight instead. Works for me, Carter said, but I'd like some of that pie now. It seems settled enough. Meaning Godzilla, not Ronald. I'll make some coffee, Ida Bell said as we all started to walk away. What about me, Ronald yelled. You can't leave me here. Sure I can, Carter said. I'll see about getting you down when I'm done having pie. But then you're going straight to jail and you're going to pay for the damage to my boat, for the expense to haul it back to the dock, and for my and Deputy Burrow's aggravation. When I'm done filling out all that paperwork, I'm going to charge you with discharging your weapon on private property, and I might even work up a case for alligator poaching. Ronald's face flushed red. I was defending myself! Godzilla looked up and hissed, and Ronald t tightened his grip on the limb. Really, I said, so Godzilla came into your house, and you chased him out with your gun. That's not important, Ronald said. Yes, it is, I said. You know I have security cameras, right? I'll bet that when we pull up the footage over the apple pie we're going to eat, we'll see you trespassing into my yard to shoot the gator. He was never a threat to you. What about Christmas, Ronald tagged. He almost killed me. He ripped my costume off. Everyone saw me naked. Your birthday suit is not the worst thing you've we've seen you in, I said. And since we didn't get full frontal, I'm good. I'm still kind of damaged by it all, <laughs> Deputy Burrow said. Carter nodded. I looked down at Godzilla. We'll be back later with a snack for you. The gator rumbled a bit and I shook my head. Nothing surprised me more. Gertie pulled out her cell phone and took a picture of Ronald and Godzilla. You're such an idiot, she said. A pirate costume, really? Pirates are rugged and tough. Ever heard of Captain Hook, Gertie asked and pointed to the gator. We all laughed. It was time for pie. So, I don't know if you want more spoils in that. I could go on. Um... But, uh, we have a Mardi Gras parade, and someone gets shot, and Fortune's like, um, Fortune's like, uh, that shot wasn't an accident, that was on purpose. And they're like, well, with all her CIA experience, she says from the directory and stuff like that, that was done with a long range rifle and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So who was shot? Why were they shot? Who is hiding their secret identities? You will have to read the book to find out. And while I wrote it down, let's see, where did that put it? Um, Let me see if this is the right page. I 
So tell me, what do you think? So uh, Fortune's away. She's in uh, New Orleans. They're tracking down information on the killer and some other specific information on her father's potential arrival. She has this conversation with Carter. And I hope you have followed the video to the end because this is good stuff. But if you haven't, you've missed good stuff. This is called Spoiler Alert, Spoiler Alert, Spoiler Alert. Um, Carter is babysitting Merlin, her cat. Tiny is his big, huge, massive dog. Uh, our priority for start is when you get back home, I'm moving in for a while. When I'm not at work, I will be with you. What about Tiny? He and Merlin can hang out. That might be worse than terror terrorists gaining entry. Fine, Carter said. He can stay with my mom for a while. But you know you're going to have to introduce them sooner or later. Unless you plan on living in separate houses forever. Hint. Hint. I, uh, I guess I hadn't thought about it. Good Lord. I just... I'd only just gotten used to being in a serious relationship. And yeah, we spent some nights at each other's houses, but officially cohabitating was a place my mind couldn't, hadn't gone yet. You plan on breaking up with me, he asked. We're not 16, Carter. Adults don't break up. They do on those reality shows. For the first time in hours, I felt a smile tug at my lips, and I knew I was on my way back from the dark side. You watch reality shows, I asked. I wasn't planning on breaking up before, but I might have to consider it now. He chuckled just a tiny bit, probably more for my benefit than because I'd said what was actually funny. Nothing is going to happen to you or the people you care about, he said. You can trust me. I know. And the best part was, I wasn't even lying when I said it. Not even a little bit. So check it out. Bullets and beads to find out who got shot. How Gertie ends up on a Mardi Gras float, half nude, with a gazillion beads. Um, what happens with Fortune's father? And what's going on in Little O Sinful. Got some more books to read. Maybe do a vid later or tomorrow. But do please check it out. Please hit the like and subscribe. Please let me know I'm doing a good job. You've all I've got. I've got no side effects or drop-ins or editing skills or anything. What you see is what you get. It's just me reading books, talking books. I appreciate it if you would like and subscribe and hit the thumbs up because you've all I got. I don't have anybody else. So thank you. Please hit the like and subscribe.